the clip of doom. Welcome to Heating Geeks and the clip of doom. A lot of people ask how I became confident at boiler repairs and doing breakdowns. Or where, how did you learn and how did you become confident at it? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I learn and the mistakes that go with it. So keep watching. <laughs> Okay, so here we are today on this Alpha uh, Eco 2 Plus, which I believe is the same as the Intec 2. I can't remember off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so I've got to do a main heat exchanger on this boiler. It overheats when it's used for hot water for any real period of time. So, main heat exchanger. Um, yeah, this is what I have in now. Hopefully this is all I'm gonna need. Just my hand tools, pump, heat exchanger, a torch, I've got a head torch in there, some towels, and once it's obviously done, I've got to set up the combustion and gas rate it and all that stuff. So anyway, let's uh, let's get on with it. So there's our drain off, 13 mil. I've protected the electrics. Power's off. Safe isolation done. Let's uh Draining. Well, obviously, I'm done with the other screws. Okay, so that's what we're changing back there. That big cast bit of aluminium. That was the water pressure sensor clicked. Obviously, we're going to pump up this vessel while we're draining. And then we'll start removing stuff. It's quite nice. That's outside, so that's Alpha do that, and Warm House also do that. But the, uh, the bit for the pressure vessel, the bit for the expansion vessel up there, which is that's really nice. And as usual, there's nothing in there. That's why I check it every time. I don't need that gurgling when I'm uh, working on the boiler. But, hmm, that doesn't look very promising, does it? But we'll see. Often that'll just be a bit of air that's in the boiler where I've been draining it, but we'll see. We've stuck a bar in there. I'm going to disconnect it because my connection is leaking on the top. And I'll just keep an eye on this for bubbles. And I'll check it right at the end of the drop as well. I've never done one of these before. But, I mean, that's quite obvious, isn't it? Two big clips there. But the very first thing I'm going to do is check that I have the right heat exchanger before I start stripping this down. Well, it's a heat exchanger. Oh, looks like it comes with everything. That's nice. There's one over in there. Mm. Maybe it doesn't come with everything. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see what's in this other box here. But if it comes with everything, this is definitely something Baxi could learn from, isn't it? We all know Baxi could uh, help us out with a washer here and there. Okay, so I took the side panel off. That was easy. Two screws. I've uh, disconnected this that went on there and to the drain point up there, or the air vent. I'm just going to whip out the trap, which is pull that connection off it. And there's one screw underneath here usually, which isn't on this one. And that pipe off the PRV. So as you see, that's nearly out. I'm going to pull that out. And I'm not sure. I think I'll undo the three screws, twist the gas pipe out the way. Then 
undo these clips, lift the fan and the burner out, and uh, then I'm gonna look at getting this flue collector out. And then it looks like it's only gonna be the sensors, which one here, one at the back there, behind that, you can't really see it. There is one there with the red wires going to it. And then that one there, the purple one, get all of them out of the way. And yeah, this is gonna be quite straightforward. The two pipes and however it's secured, I can see one fixing back here. Looks like it'd be quite easy. Screws off the Venturi, then one. So this now should, and it does. Oh, I think we might have to take this out to get this out. Because it hits. So I think we have to take the flue collector out, which is undo this centre screw. That takes that test point off undo this screw here because you have to wiggle that down to get it off the bottom and I think the whole thing will come out and it does there we go it's nice and easy Burners up here, it's not hot. There we go. It's a gauze burner. It's not in the greatest of condition, that one. The way you check these, you hold them up to the light, so. Mm. So you see this bit here that's in shot now, you can see how nice them holes look, and then the rest of it is a little bit. That's not bad. I'll give it a clean up though. Okay, so we've got the boiler to this stage now where all we have is two pipes, which that's on a clip, that's on a clip, clip, clip. So that's the only, that's the stage we're at now. So we're, I'm sure we're gonna do that and then we're gonna uh, undo some screws and that heat exchanger is gonna come out. Now to get to this point here, let me show you exactly how many tools I've used, okay? I've used a 13 mil socket to undo the drain off or just to get it to turn a quarter of an inch so then I could use my fingers to do it. I've used a 7 mil socket to undo the nuts to hold the electrode on, although you could do that with grips or, or a normal adjustable and I've used a Phillips screwdriver. That's it so far. Um, obviously a bucket and a hose and expansion vessel pump. Doesn't take very much to change these parts. Now, obviously, the um, when it's going back together, you need your analyzer, your uh, U gauge. You need to gas rate it, do the set the combustion up. You need leak detection fluid for any joints you've disturbed. You need some grease for putting things back together. But as you like, this hasn't been difficult. Well, I'm probably about 20 minutes in now. Very, very straightforward. Okay, so as you see, something didn't go too well here. I'll show you what happened. This pipe here comes down, goes down. I pulled this clip out to take this pipe out. As you can see, that's a heating pipe. What you can't see is that clip runs through there and holds that copper pipe in as well, which is the mains, which I didn't have isolated. So that's not the best thing to have happened as you can see, not too much water everywhere, but enough. Mop up time. This is how you learn. Okay, so that was uh, fun. I've dried all this up now. You can see how it went up there hit that box look up there on the top of the wall there so that was um that was interesting and obviously i've just turned the cold off to the boiler 
So really my fault, I should have just isolated everything, not having done this before. Anyway, I'm now at the point of, you see that copper pipe move? So that clip goes all the way through both pipes. Anyway, there we go. So that's why I undone that so I could get the movement on this pipe. Oh, there's that. Okay. There we go, that's ready to go. And obviously I have to remake this connection here because that blew out, which is that mains. But a heat exchanger is ready to go. Okay, so let's see what they've got in here. Some bits and bobs. Let's see what's in the box. Oh. Feels very light. I think I know what this is in this box. Let's have a look. See, that is the um, that's the air for the expansion vessel. So we won't lose that. We'll pack that back up. And uh, yeah. It's the new one, I'm going to get it all built up. Get the sump on there and all of that. Might actually need some different tools now because these are uh, Allen key bolts. There we go, they're, they're Allen key bolts. So we need more than a screwdriver and two sides of the spanner. So here's a simple thing here that's quite nice. This rubber seal has little tabs on it. So you know A, you're putting it in the right way up and B, retains it for you quite nicely see that one there so that's quite nice so you need a 10 mil socket for the bolts on the sump that would be quite difficult without it because I mean these ones there are okay but these ones are recessed and they go quite deep so these are a 6 mil Allen key I don't know if you can see that because I'm holding the foam in my neck. The heat exchanger actually requires a lot of additional tools to actually take in the old one out. So this is a 2mm Allen key on here to tighten these. I needed a 6mm Allen key for the bolts at the back and to attach them clips uh, I needed a T20. So a torque bit 20 same as opens up the glow and valent um, cases nowadays. Be proud. So, obviously, I'm just putting this back together. I've uh, I've pulled it out, greased the O-ring, shoved that back in. And all I'm doing is you don't get any new O-rings, so I'm just cleaning everything up, greasing it all, and pushing it all back together. I still don't know what the O-ring that comes with the heat exchange for. Maybe it's for the gas, because I know you have to disconnect that. I'll have a check of the size later, but we're getting there. Okay, so the pipes are in. Now, the clip of doom, as it will forever be known to me. That's all good. So after watching that, I'm sure you're aware of exactly how I learn. I, I do it, I give it a go. I, um, I see what happens, mistakes were made. And um, you know, and generally you live and learn in life. So I screwed up a lot along the way, um, but I always learn from my mistakes, always. The clip of doom, as I'm gonna call it, and I will always remember it, it's gonna stay with me now for life. Um, just like the first time I done a valent um, shunt pump, I had a nickname for them as well before I'd done a lot of them, which I can't repeat. Um, but you know, you live and learn. So I hope you understand that experience is only gained from doing things. 
Um, you have to do it, you have to live it to, uh, to get the confidence to just go out there and do it every day. Coming from an install background and getting into breakdowns seems like a difficult step, but it's not if you just do it. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Help me with my YouTube analytics. Really appreciate it, doesn't cost you anything. Um, and I'll keep growing my uh, lockdown beard. And obviously I did have to sort myself out. I was looking way too scruffy. I'll see you on the next one. Right, I figure I'd better let you know that alpha, um, although I soaked it, once I, uh, once I fitted that heat exchanger and everything else, it fired up perfectly fine. Uh, the only thing I will say is, I did set the gas valve up on that boiler and the gas valve setting that up took about as long as fitting that main heat exchanger. That's not one for the faint hearted. I would definitely recommend you give yourself some time to set up one of them boilers and set the gas valve up. So anyway, I'll catch you on the next one.